I am. Thank you, Mr. You Chairman. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has been a monumental challenge for healthcare and economic perspectives. It has also further exposed the vulnerabilities on a variety of related policies, notably the rollout of contract contact tracing efforts, and it has been difficult given the fragmented state of data privacy. I've heard from hundreds of Nebraskans worried about how their personal information will be protected. And for this reason, I was proud to help introduce the COVID-19 Consumer Data Protection Act that Chairman Wicker led. This important legislation always gives momentum to those broader privacy efforts. Mr. Kovacek, in your testimony, you stressed the need for coherent implementation of data privacy framework among federal agencies and considering state authorities. Does the current lack of coherence create an imbalance between foreign regulators and American companies trying to compete in the global economy? And does it also affect our country's innovative process? Short answer, Senator, is uh, that it does uh, impede our efforts to work effectively in an international setting. Uh, our state and federal regulators do work together. They cooperate in important ways, but that cooperation is not nearly as deep and complete as it could be. And the absence of the cooperation means that the conversation among the relevant participants is not as extensive. It means that we don't draw upon the experience of all these bodies in a way that we might otherwise. And it means that we don't build a consensus across all these bodies about what should be the content of our policy. So that if you ask foreign observers, uh, what is US privacy law? It's very difficult uh, for them to answer that question in, in, less than, uh, in less than many pages because it is such a fragmented system. Where it exists, it can be very powerful, but it is not comprehensive. And in order to give a good answer, you have to answer by reference to a welter of different decision makers. So uh, I do think that the lack of a more coherent framework for formulating policy and implementing it denies us an important level of coherence uh, in the United States but it really gets in the way of our efforts to shape global standards, and it causes us to be dismissed as not having an effective system. So what I'm, what I'm hearing from you is that not only is it um, difficult within the United States, and I, I believe it's going to become more and more fragmented if, the, if we do not step up soon and be able to work together on this, but also, we're basically being dismissed by um, by by foreign governments, by by innovators, and by companies uh, overseas because we don't have a policy, a real policy in place. Would you agree with that? Am I hearing you? Correctly? I think that's unmistakably correct. Uh, there's a, there's a chance. Put it this way: if we do not adopt a national privacy law of our own that reflects the deliberations of this committee, those who've thought about it a lot, uh, we will get a national privacy policy. It will be called the GDPR. That will be it. We'll have one. Supplemented by the CCPA uh, with all the thoughtful work that's been done there. But, but do we want our national privacy policy to be the product of a decision made by thoughtful foreign government, very thoughtful state, but without the contribution of the national legislature to formulate our own distinctive collective judgment about these issues. Hey, thank you. I was uh, very glad to join Chairman Wicker and other members of the committee in introducing the Safe Data Act last week. And this bill, I believe, would enhance the FTC's central role in implementing and enforcing core privacy principles. Uh, do you, sir, believe that such clarification could contribute uh, to, to our discussions and moving forward so that, so that we could uh, have something done at the federal level? I think it will give us a voice again in this international arena that we have not had in the way that we should. Uh, it's, a, it's a great step in the right direction. Thank you very much, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator.